Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles. I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in noisy, pressure-washing Victoria, British Columbia, along with a loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it and others up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. something going on here on the causeway well yes indeed back up to Genoa this last week and advanced on that rotten corner of the uh, cabin top on MV Geordie uh, I turned into more work than I had imagined as a result it's turned into two episodes creating this bonus episode you're about to watch so dive into this and uh, we'll finish it up on the weekend and welcome back to the shed and MV Jordy. It is a wild and blustery day out here today. Uh, the shed and the boat are bouncing around furiously. Anyway, I'm so pleased with the way that went. I, I, I can't stop thinking about it, honestly. Um, very, very happy thinking about the detailing I'm going to do to uh, tab that all in. And of course, most of you will know that something very interesting is going to happen here, but not this week. This week, we're going to deal with this. <laughs> and, uh, that's going to be a heck of a lot of fun, I, I hope. Let's dive in. All right, so here we go. Uh, I can see there's a section of plywood that's bad, and then all these strips, and it doesn't really get much better until the actual brow. So I think I'm going to start actually working with the vacuum to take this apart as it comes apart so less falls into the ceiling. I've taped up everything from below, but. I'd rather as little dust falls through as possible. Okay, so it's pretty evident that this piece of plywood is shot and uh, hopefully you can see that it was uh, patched in here some time ago right to this line. So I might as well just replace it again all the way up to here. In fact, it's just the replacement that rotted again. It stops dead at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the replacement. I don't think I'm gonna have much luck with these screws and I do wanna remove them because I don't wanna cause too much damage uh, to, the, to the deck beams under here. So I'm gonna use an extreme technique here related to what you saw last week. Works really well. Only problem is it gets bloody hot. <laughs> I'd wear gloves for safety, but the rubber causes too much friction, so wear them backwards. Now they're slippery again. Speaking of gloves, it has been suggested that I would wear some gloves while doing demolition. Well, I would like to say that actually I've been wearing gloves all my life because my hands are pretty rough, but because I did buy these gloves for someone else, I'll actually wear them myself today. steel ply and an actual 
piece of stuff. Aluminum. And now to remove the screw, you can just crush the remaining bit of wood right onto the screw with the vice grips and out it comes. Neat. actually pretty good. I can see uh, some of the deck beams have been sistered and I'm just gonna let that be. Um, really not bad at all. The problem is this massive hole here. Yeah we're gonna have to do something about this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you it's getting hard to work out here. Everything is bouncing around. It's kind of work like working on deck at sea. Okay, we've got, a little, got a quiet moment here, we'll carry on. Well, it's pretty obvious I'm gonna to have to do something pretty serious here. Uh, so I'm gonna cut this whole deck beam out from about here and uh, then we'll see what we'll do. Time to move to a genuine blade. Unfortunately, the structure for my overheads inside are attached to what's left of this, so making a bit of a mess downstairs. So be it. This little nugget is the last, uh, it's the heel of that deck beam. <laughs> so we have a schwack of screws that I put in here about seven years ago when I rebuilt this bulkhead. Uh, we've got a solid uh, tapered piece that I put in here and a solid um, plywood bulkhead that I put in here because the bulkhead three quarter inch marine plywood is still good. There's some goop on here which I'll remove. This uh, deck beam is broken here so it definitely does need to be resistered. So uh, I got some work to do starting with cutting these off. Okay, so let's see what I've got here. I've got it all out. I've got this cleaned out to the uh, edge of the plywood that I put in here a couple of years ago. That's all solid. This is no good at all. So I have to put a, um, a new uh, tail on um, the deck beam here to go down and sit on the, what I'll call the sill there because I build houses, but I think that's probably called a shelf, a beam shelf. I don't know what that's called. Anyway, it's at the top of the cabin side and it's in good shape, which is great. Um, now I think I'm probably going to have to remove the last strip here, uh, which is starting to, to uh, deteriorate underneath the brow trim here. Now to be fair, this brow trim has got to come off anyway, because I want to be able to tuck the fiberglass into that. So, you know, it's just a never ending sequence of taking things apart. <sighs> If you've been watching the show for a while, you'll know my technique for removing um, bungs, old bungs and the screws inside. So if I give you a close up of what we're looking at right here, there's a bung here. And what I'm gonna do is drill out that bung. I'm sorry I don't have a better place to put you, but such is the nature of working over the water. Anyway, I'm gonna drill a small hole right in the center of this bung until I collide with the screw that's inside. And then I'm gonna take a in this case, just a cheap deck screw. And I'm gonna wind it into that until just as I start to bottom out on that, but I'm not gonna to push too hard because I don't wanna strip it. Then I'm gonna take a schwack of heat and I'm gonna soften whatever's bonding this bung in. Glue, varnish, who knows? 
Then I'm just going to wind in the screw and with any luck it will push on the screw that's inside and wind the plug straight out. Just like that. Neat, eh? likely to be ugly. here there is fiberglass. It's as if perhaps the cabinet top was once fiberglassed, stripped off at the top of the brow strip and then redone in something else. Anyway, um, it's interesting. If I'm correct, that's the line of the top of the cabin side. And in fact, the top of the cabin side is curved in a little bit to start the curve of the cabin top. It's kind of interesting. What I can say is there's a marked <laughs> height difference here and here because this has not been sanded about seven times uh, whereas this has been. Okay. Got nails in two directions there making that a little bit difficult but that, uh, that came off quite nicely. I mean, really, really. Ugh, for a change of pace for a bit, I think I'll see if I can fare this down a little bit. See how it looks like. Well, that's just awesome. Uh, ready for final fairing. And this whole area I would consider done. So if this is the sort of thing you find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. And if you really enjoyed this kind of stuff, give it a thumbs up or better yet, share it with that friend of yours who might also find it interesting. Okay, back to work over there. All right then, so I have found a lovely piece of Douglas fir that I can craft a new tail on this beam and uh, then we can then we can keep moving here. Exactly how I'm going to do this I'm not sure yet but uh, let me think about it for a minute. Now this piece is a little bit wider than the inch and a half that these deck beams are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little shaving off the top of the plywood here, which will just allow it to slide right down in there and that'll, that'll do the trick. Beauty. Okay, so 
get it square with this end. Okay, how about I use my hammer as a hammer instead of my hand. Okay, so now I just need to scribe the bottom of this and a little notch around this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Beauty, 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 beauty. Perfect under there, perfect here. Okay, now we scrap it at the top. A little more complicated, because I want it to be very accurate. Well, actually, this is pretty good. It's pretty good. There's actually just enough of this curve left. Perfect. Now I cut the inside, in other words, the concave cuts with the jigsaw. But my jigsaw, either I, or this is a little trim, or my skill with it, in a piece this thick, it's hard to keep a really vertical cut. It turned out actually pretty well. But I'm gonna do the outside cut with the circular saw because actually I can just make successive trims and get a very, very square cut. Um, using the tables, uh, using the uh, circular saw. There we go. So I just cut as sharp as I can, and then I can take successive cuts even sharper. Okay, a little bit of sanding, and it's pretty darn close. Well, actually, I'm not going to pound it all the way because it's really hard to get out. Um, but it's just gone to 5 o'clock, and I don't want to run any noisy tools anymore today. But I am very pleased with the way this is all going. Tomorrow, we'll get some wood on here. I wanted to just take a moment to introduce you to the lovely little motor vessel, Ananda. This is a 32-foot custom uh, motor yacht built by Harrison Boat Building in 1931. And the reason I'm telling you about it is because it's for sale. Now, uh, for all transparency, I have nothing to do with the sale and not associated with it in any way. It's just a lovely boat owned by a lovely gentleman. And I've seen the boat in the flesh, as some of you may recognize this footage, when uh, Charlie uh, came and joined me on the Sunshine Coast a little while ago. I just think this is a lovely introduction boat to the wooden boat lifestyle uh, in the Pacific Northwest and if it's something you thought you might be getting interested in uh, this might be a fantastic candidate for you. Anyway I've included a link down below in the uh, description of the uh, sale page and uh, you can go have a look at that if you like. I've also included a link of the video that you're now watching uh, when uh, he came to join me in case you're interested in watching the rest of this beautiful footage. there and welcome to the Travels of Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you from the cozy little mobile house of MV Palm on a rainy, cool, damp day in Victoria, British Columbia. And I am babysitting Finn uh, today, and uh, he's going to join me for the Beer of the Week. We're carrying on in theme uh, with non-alcoholized beer. This is Peroni Mazero Azuro, and I just saw it. It had a big zero on it, and I thought I'd give it a shot. I am so pleased with the way this cabin top work is coming. Um, this being a bonus episode is because, yes, it's taking a little longer and justified two episodes, but on the whole, it's really, really satisfying. And I can tell you, having actually recently completed the little project with GLC on the weekend, it came together very, very nicely. Cheers. Like many dealcoholized beers, that is tasty, but I don't think I would choose it instead of a beer. But anyway, it's a fine carbonated beverage. What do you think, Pup? What do you think, Pup? All right, carrying on as normal. Uh, the winner of a Travels with Jordy um, t-shirt for last week is Drenov, D-R-E-N-O-V. Drenov, get a hold of me. Congratulations, you've won yourself a Travels with Jordy t-shirt. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, with no new uh, news otherwise, I will jump straight to the word of the week. And the word of the week this week will be surprise because uh, the beer of the week that'll come up on the weekend will have a rather significant surprise in it for you. Cheers and uh, see you in a few days. What do you think, Vane? <laughs> 